All right, guys. I'm Bosk on a segue, and uh, I'm going to do a brief video on openings, if my stream is working, which I'm not convinced it is. Is it? Hopefully. We'll find out when the video is done. Anyway, this is take two. I tried to do this blind without having <laughs> looked at the modern, without having looked at the old Benoni at all, like, completely, like, I'd, I've never, never once played the old Benoni, um, and it didn't go so well, so I decided to stop that video and start a new one, and this time, maybe it'll be a little bit better, because I spent about 15 minutes looking at the old Benoni now, so the old Benoni, for those who don't know, is D4C5, the idea is that we are trying to attack the flank, trade a flanking pawn for a center pawn, because the goal in the opening, one of the major goals in the opening, is to either occupy the center with pawns, or attack it indirectly with pieces. I prefer the former approach. It's the more classical approach. I, to me, feels a little sharper. You can create a lot more tension in those kind of positions, in my opinion. Um, but that's a style thing. The important thing is that I've decided I want to learn how to play this opening. And one of the most common moves in this position is for black to just push past d5. I did not know that until earlier today. So the best response, I think, is likely e5. Um, if you look at those lines, those are the other potential responses I considered. Um, didn't go so well. Um, e5. Now here... You might see c4, but we're going to look at the e4 variation, and then d6, and knight c3. So this is the position that we are going to assume you're completely out of your opening theory now. Um, I was actually out of opening theory well before this, um, or out of the theory I knew well before this. So we're going to stop here and look at the position and try and come up with a few ideas based on the standard opening principles. The first thing I noticed is that we already had the idea of attacking the center on the flanks. The center looks pretty locked down. This pawn here is pretty stuck. It's going to be hard for us to attack. But while that pawn is stuck there, it means that this diagonal is going to be relatively closed off for both sides. Um, so we might be able to utilize that, and at some point in the future, play this f4, f5 f push, and create an open file for our rook after we castle. The rook will come here, and we'll have this nice open file. So, that was my idea. The first thing you have to do, though, is develop your pieces. So, we've decided that this push looks intriguing. Obviously, you don't want to do that yet, because now our king is still in the center, and this doesn't look pleasant. Um, in fact, let's take a quick engine check, and after bishop b5... Knight d7, knight f3, um, and then knight e7. According to Ribka, um, white is already a whole pawn ahead in this position because this bishop right here is stuck. It, it doesn't have any squares to move. And in order to give it squares to move, you're going to have to either put this knight somewhere awkward over here or over here. Um, it's just, it's not comfortable, so obviously we can't do that yet, and you don't want to make those kind of breaks too early, um, so first we need to develop our pieces. So, the first thing to consider would be maybe bishop e7, but the problem with bishop e7 is now our knight has to come here, and we'll block in, after the knight comes here, it blocks in this pawn, so this pot push that we wanted is no longer possible. So, bearing that in mind, we don't play that. We do also notice that if we open this file, 
a very strong square is going for us is going to be right here. Our knight would be very good there. And it just so happens that that's a clever little knight remover that will get us there. So we can begin our development with knight e7. Oh wait, I already have that as a main line. So we can begin our develop with development with knight e7. So now black or white has a few options here. Um, I think most likely you'd run into knight f3. Um, you might see bishop d7 or b5 check, then you just can respond with bishop d7, developing a piece. Now if he takes, you've just got an extra tempo in development, and then after knight f3, you can play... It, we're we're going to assume we still want to play this push. Um, it's not really necessary at this point. We can play knight g6, castles, bishop e7, h3, castles. And now, he's going to want to develop this bishop. He needs to develop it somewhere. None of these scores are available, so it's one of these two. Um, I think this is slightly better, but we'll say here. And now here, f5. And in fact, that's actually the engine recommended move, even. Um, surprisingly, I didn't expect that. Um, that was, like, totally unplanned. But So here, yeah, we can just play f5, and it's even better now because he traded off the light-squared bishop. So there's no threats on these light squares at the moment. So, just rookie one, we can take, knight takes e4, knight b6, and now we're threatening this pawn, so he has to cover that somehow, knight c4, and we've just got a pretty strong position here. Um, this knight mirrors might have seemed a little enigmatic, but they seemed like a good centralized knight. Um, if you can, every one of these moves, see, once this knight moved, it moved with a tempo because the knight has to defend. And this is another move with a tempo because now this pawn is threatened. So, we've gotten the knight to the center with tempo, which is always a good thing in the opening. Um, centralized knights are very, very strong. Um, that was the point of those enigmatic knight moves. So, obviously, he's not going to play bishop b5. So what else would he, could he play? Maybe bishop e3? Whoops, no. Knight f3. We already looked at that. Um, bishop e3, maybe? Once again, we can just stick with our plan. And now again, after we do have to worry a little bit about this bishop with the x-ray after we push f4, but I think it should still be okay if we just play here, because if he takes we can now take back with the bishop, and we're eyeing, that was not what I wanted to hit. I wanted to hit shift, I accidentally hit control. So we're now eyeing this square, and have pressure down this file. Um, this just looks like a pleasant game for black. We've managed to trade a flanking pawn for a center pawn, managed to get this open file that we wanted, our king is relatively safe. We've most, more or less completed development. We'll play knight d7 at some point, and then maybe knight b6 threatening this bishop. So, what other ideas could white have, and how could we respond? So, maybe, maybe not knight f3, or maybe not standard development. Maybe he wants to get aggressive immediately. Do we have a nice response to this? Here in this position, I think we might have to abandon the f4 push idea. 
Um, it might just be overzealous. But the thing is, here we can just play knight d7. We can just wait. We're, we don't have to hurry. And we also have the option of playing on this flank. So, since he's playing on this flank, the center's relatively locked up. That means we likely want to play on this flank and put pressure over here. And our pieces are well enough placed. They're very centralized. They can very easily go to either side. This knight can be used to defend while the rest of the pieces are used to attack on the queen side. So maybe after knight f3, um, knight g6, h5, knight e7. Okay, so can't play knight, we'd have to play this. Um, we can't just play knight g6. So we're going to use the knights to defend on this side, and we'll attack with the pawns on the queen side. Um, and that seems like a reasonable plan. So here we might see bishop g5. That seems like a reasonable threat. Um, I'm not sure what we would want to do here. Maybe... Maybe h5, followed by g6. Um, no, that won't work. Uh, maybe in response to this h4 push, h5 immediately is a little better. Then after knight f3, g6. And then if the bishop comes here, we can just play bishop g7. And here we feel... We've got a, we've got a sort of, we've got a pretty, we've got a, a decent defense in front of our king. Uh, obviously we had to abandon that push idea. So, you have to be willing to abandon those early game ideas you come up with. If the position doesn't pan out the way you're hoping, if your opponent deviates too wildly. Um, but still seems pretty good here. But let's go back to the main line, which was after 97. Knight f6, knight f3, um, sorry, I just wanted to promote that, uh, knight g6, as it was our plan, um, this might be a little bit of a bad idea, we are moving the same piece twice in a row, that's generally a bad idea, but sometimes you can get away with it. Um, maybe more precise would be g6, but that doesn't ma meet our plan. So we want to make the best move that is in line with our plan. So um, as long as the plan is sound, you can break a few rules to follow it. Um, I'm a strong believer that having a plan is more important than anything else in chess. Um, so I would play knight g6 here. Uh, if I look at the engine, let me pull that up again. Ribka. Um, he would, Ribka would play knight g6, actually. Um, if it wasn't going to play knight g6, it would play knight d7 or g6. Um, it also considered knight a6, but I really don't like that. Um, that's probably the idea is and then threatening that square, um, which seems reasonable, but not conducive to our plan. Maybe just bishop g7 would be the more disciplined move, but we're going to go with the plan over precise discipline in this case, because we're just doing rough openings. So here, we see a lot of options for white again. Um, most, this is the one that would force us, once again, if he pushes H, we have to acknowledge that we have to abandon our plan, and we can come up with something else, namely locking up, go away, there, okay, so, if he does push, try to pawn push on this side, He's also hurting his own king safety. He's going to have to castle queenside in that case. So, um, if he does push h4, 
we can t we can take solace in the fact that we can just lock up the position with h5, and then he's going to have to castle queenside in order to get his king somewhere relatively safe because his pawns are going to be relatively weak on the king side as well. So we can use this pawn this flanking queenside pawn storm as the backup idea. So that would be our backup would be our backup plan. But if he plays standard moves, bishop b5 check, standard developing moves. Here we can just play bishop g7. Um, knight d7 might be slightly more precise, but I don't, I'm not sure. I like bishop d7. Um, then he'll likely castle bishop e7. So he was he would play a4 because now that he's castled on the king side, he's going to have to make his play on the queen side, um, most likely, because he doesn't really have any real way to break on this side because his knight is blocking in his safe break. You really don't want to be moving your a your h and g pawns are the two most important defensive pawns generally, um, so he's not going to want to be pushing those too much unless he has to. So a4 would likely be his move, just to uh, support this bishop. Um, maybe, maybe bishop e3. Um, just continuing to develop, and then we'll just castle. We'll see. Likely rook e1. And here we can just continue our plan. So basically, we've gotten to this position. And we've looked at a lot of variations, and we've had two main plans from the very start of the game. From way back here, we've had our main plan was to push this pawn at some point after completing development to utilize the F file to attack the, the white king. Our backup plan was, if for some reason he pushes the H4 pawn, we're going to lock it up with H5 and play with our knights and pawn or bishop and pawns on the queen side and take space over there. Um, so that's generally just the quick gist of the opening. So if we look at the evaluation after all of this, this is just completely random. None of this is book. Um, no games. We can go back. Let's go back and see how early we have, we have to go, how early we left book. We left book, move five, move five, um, when we played knight g6, we were leaving book, more or less. Um, there's no real theory here. Um, the move that technically back left book was white's move, um, but it was engine superior to the book moves by a lot, so I figured it was good. Um, and then from here, we just looked at all of White's top candidate moves and made sure our plan was sound enough. Over the board, this is pretty easy to do, uh, or I'm not going to say it's easy to do. It, it kind of flows naturally from playing the position. Um, you ask yourself every move what you, what the position wants to play, what, what, what the, how you complete your plan. That's all you're asking yourself. And as long as you follow the opening principles and complete your plan, um, you'll have a strong opening. So we're completely out of book here. And for white, I've played the engine best move every time. Um, and plenty of my moves haven't been the best. Um, in fact, bishop e7, second best move. This is the best move according to the engine for white. Um, then I would have castled. Here, best move. It was, uh, it's the obvious move. Um, actually, the engine best move. Rupa changed his mind. Is bishop e3. So let's make the main line. So here, we're going to play to our plan, right? This is not even... This is not even in the engine's top five moves. Um, but it's to our plan. And it's what we've been playing for. So we're going to play it. And now after takes 
Rook takes. Um, F takes was the engine best move. Bishop d3. Rook f8. A4. Um, these are all already in here. Um, and then f4. Here, f this knight f4, not the top move, but it's to the plan, because we wanted it there. And if we look at the engine analysis, I will see if I can make you guys, see if I can pull that up for you guys. There we go. Looking at the engine analysis, we see that even not playing the optimal moves, just because we stuck to a plan, the engine evaluates it as perfectly equal. Um, to put this plus 0.16 in perspective for you, um, it's not bad. The starting position after 1d4 in an engine's mind is about 0.14, or about 0.15. The very starting position is usually about 0.15. Oh, it's about 10, 0.1 on this one. So we've come out of the opening perfectly equal, which is great for black. Um, and we played completely unplayed moves, not engine best moves, just nice, disciplined, standard moves, and we've got a position that an engine would be happy to play. So, as long as you follow basic opening principles and formulate a plan right from the beginning, you can have a strong uh, opening. And I'm actually going to start playing this opening. I really like this. This looks really cool. Um, I'm very interested in the Benoni. Um, I very much like this knight here. This looks very strong. And uh, if you guys have any questions or comments on this video, please let me know. I know it's not a very good video. I did it very quickly. Um, I didn't do very much prep. And I'm very tired. I just needed a break from studying and wanted to make a video for you guys. So uh, questions or comments on YouTube or email me at bosschess, B-O-S-S-K, chess, at gmail.com. And uh, have a good day, guys. Peace.